Okay, so today we're going to talk about minimally invasive and non-invasive medical techniques. And these can be either diagnostic, so you will use them to see what's wrong, or surgical, so we can use them to correct a problem. All right, now, by the end of it, you're going to be able to discuss minimally and non-invasive medical techniques with those that are available to us, and you should be able to tabulate those. I don't mean, really tell you to tabulate everything, but it's a good way to store a lot of information. Now, you should be able to talk about some of the advantages as well. If we see here, um, the gallbladder, this is a gallbladder removal, and we've made four very small incisions, and each one of those will be about the size of a $2 coin. Um, whereas here, we have a gallbladder removal, and you can see that they've made a rather large cut through four or so layers of tissue and that's quite destructive and healing time can be quite long. So non-invasive technique is one where no incision is made into the body, okay? nothing goes in, that's not, in, that's not invasive. A, we can use laser treatment to remove gallstones. Uh, my favourite surgical example is the breaking up of kidney stones using ultrasound. So it's a high frequency sound waves. Um, we can also use ultrasound diagnostically, and that's pretty cool. So that's where we can test all sorts of things on unborn, unborn fetus. Like they, they don't harm the baby at all, completely safe. Minimally invasive is where, again, we're talking down here, the keyhole or laparoscopic surgery, where it's as small an incision as possible is made, okay, so the minimal amount of effort, or minimal amount of um, damage is done, and this is what keyhole surgery is, as you know, so you use um, essentially remote controls, you know, all your tools are on, on the ends of long arms, and you have some cameras in there so you can see what you're doing, alright, x-rays, now these are part of the light spectrum, the electromagnetic spectrum, but they're not visible light. So, when William Roentgen discovered it in 1895, he really freaked his wife the hell out. Like, she had no idea what was happening, she thought it was sorcery, and I think she left him for a little while. Now, we're able to see things which are going on inside the body without cutting into it, and that obviously has massive impact for um, reducing complications. So they're most used for producing images of bones and other hard structures, but we can use them to detect some bacterial infections like tuberculosis or some cancers, um, but generally hard, hard tissues. Now there are disadvantages. It is ionizing radiation and that means it can cause cancer. Now you get a 2D, 2D image, it's like a photo, so if you take the image from different angles, you can then build up a 3D photo or a 3D location of whatever injury you're talking about. However, that requires a lot more exposure and is at the point where doctors will avoid giving children x-rays at all because they're just more susceptible to it. And yeah, so we try and avoid that as much as possible. Ultrasound. Um, again, using super high pitch sound waves are projected into tissues. Now, these work because they, they bounce back, okay, off different tissues, and how the, the time at which they bounce back from when they're sent, that's how we're able to tell how far away things are. And we can build up an image um, with some fancy mathematics and, yeah. So, it's commonly used in obstetrics, so uh, care of pregnant women, um, and allows us to tell a lot about the fetus, really. Um, you know, whether it's like they have Down syndrome, if it's developing at the right uh, rate, how old it is, etc. Um, again, my favourite use for so that those are diagnostic. My favourite use for this surgery is to break up kidney stones. Um, when it's being used in a surgical technique, it is ultra carefully controlled. Generally, fairly safe and harmless, but there are some frequencies that can interfere. So we have newly developed 3D ultrasound, and that's new, and anyone who's had a baby recently will 
have been offered that, but it's also a, more than just the making weird pictures of your child. They do look very weird. It's more useful for um, detecting cancers, so polyps growths, basically. Now, we can use echo echocardiography, which is basically probes that emit sound waves directly related at the heart and it allows us to get quite a specific picture of how it's moving and how it's pumping. Um, and you get feedback in real time, which is a, a visualization of the way the heart's moving, which is, again, fairly important. So, this is the picture we're all used to. We've all seen babies and it's all very adorable. Um, this is what they can do now, but there are some dads out there, or, and mums, um, who when they first see the picture of their children have no idea what they're looking at. You see all sorts of weird shapes in there when really it's, we can't tell what we're looking at. We just see a, a freaky picture of someone's face that makes no sense at all. Um, thermography. Now, thermography is digital infra infrared imaging. So basically it measures heat. So infrared light is heat light, because it's heat. Um, and you can map the different changes in temperature of the body. Now, cancer tends to draw a lot of blood to it, which means that area tends to be warmer than everywhere else. So it's actually quite useful for diagnosing cancer, um, as well as injuries. Again, if you, if you have an injury, um, tear a muscle, a lot of blood will flow into that area and it will be a lot hotter than everywhere else. Um, yeah, and so you can use it to detect how well it's going along, is it progressing, etc, etc. Um, the MRI, so Magnetic Resonance Imaging, um, it scans the body um, and basically it deals with how, I'm not sure how far to go into it, Basically, living tissue gives off its own electromagnetic signals, as it says there. Um, and using the water content of it, we can develop an image that's very, very close to um, the, the human themselves. But if you look at this picture here, the, all the soft living, squishy stuff is very easy to see. But what's quite hard to identify is the bone. Um, this is less useful for looking at bones because it just doesn't have the water content that the rest of the body does. Um, so, by putting it in a 3D field, and, and this is why it's this round shape here, by putting it in a 3D field, we can see, um, we, we can build up a 3D image of the entire body if we need to. Now, very popular, very, very popular does have some drawbacks. Basically, this is the one where a lot of people can't get used. Okay, so if you have any metal implants, you can't use it. Um, my mother has a bionic ear, she's not allowed near this thing. And yeah, basically it will rip metal straight out of the body. All right, so that's, the, that's our build up of non-invasive surgeries, that's not surgeries, non-invasive techniques, medical techniques. We will look at the minimally invasive in a bit more detail. Basically, you're going to do some simulated operations to remove the appendix, I think. Anyway, so stay around. I hope you took lots of notes. Bring some questions class tomorrow. All right, good work.